Hi, I'm Kuhn. I work at uh, Linaro and uh, I, I registered a demo, but Lucas here did uh, most of the work. Hi, I'm Lucas. I'm here representing Cody at Linaro Connect. Uh, really fortunate that I could be here and give a presentation about all this as well. So what do you do? What do I do? Um, this is actually just a hobby of mine and an, a spare time project. I'm actually a control systems engineer by trade. <laughs> and like a secret company or? No, I work at a company called RBSA and here in BC. So, uh, and you, when you talk about coding, you say it's also a hobby. Yes. Everybody's just hobbying with this or why? Uh, from, from what I've seen, yes, there might be people professionally working on it, but most people I interact with, it's a, it's a hobby. So you got a Yokto t-shirt and you got, yeah. it says Libra Lake. So which one's better? <laughs> <laughs> For, for home use, I would use the Libre Elac thing, because I'm, I'm also involved with the Libre Elac project, but you only get one choice on your badge. Right, on the on the t-shirt. Yes. And it's a nice t-shirt. Thanks. you have one of those? I don't have one of those, no. Yeah, you want to have one of those? I, I, I'd wear one, sure. So what do you have here? What's the demo? So uh, Can you come close to the mic? Yeah, the, show the uh, demo here like is this. running on uh, Dragonboard 410, and we're running Kodi on Libre Elect, and we're just showing the hardware capability of using the hardware video decoders used through V4L2, um, which is uh, the Linux subsystem for video decoding methods. So you got uh, right here, if I check this board, it says Kodi uh, playback with standard V4L2 stack. Correct. Uh, so you were talking about this for a while, right? What's yes. special now? What's happening? It's now actually working. And it's it's working across vendors. So we have Qualcomm here. We have NXP there. Uh, AM Logic is now working. Uh, Logic. Ra Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So you get a Raspberry Pi, so which Raspberry is a Broadcom stuff. Yep. Yeah, it has, has a new stack. It's it's not mainline yet, but it's also free for L2. I think Rockchip is working on it. Yep. So basically, almost every SOC vendor is now working on it or has it working. Hey, can you remind me, uh, what's the main advantage of using v 4 2 instead of what it was before? So, we, the weeks before, when we were working on this, we used name logic board to do this. And uh, for this demo, we just run the same software on the Dragon board and it just works. We didn't need to change anything. So it just works? It just works. It's a driver for video playback? Yeah, yeah it's, and it's in the Linux kernel, so uh, you don't need to look in strange places. This, this, this Dragon Board is running mainline kernel, mainline Mesa, and the only thing that is out of tree in any way is a single FFM patch that allows, or FFM peg patch that allows us to um, have this zero copy rendering that we're doing. So. Zero copy rendering. So it's a little kind of like a pro uh, proprietary thing that the SOC needs to be still something sometimes? No, uh, so the reason we want zero copy is because it, it, it maximizes the performance that you can have on these little embedded chipsets. Typically they are very weak in the CPU and the GPU and have um, dedicated hardware for video processing. So we want to make uh, best use of that as we can. And um, this is how we're doing it. So, and uh, what has Linaro done with this? Or what has Kuhn done? Done? Can you, you explain? <laughs> um, I actually had to work with some of the Linaro guys on the Dragon Board initially uh, when uh, the Dragon Board stuff wasn't upstream. We, I was doing a bunch of testing to get the V4L2 driver working properly and uh, to just get the whole software stack working. So. In terms of Lenaro and me, I was basically just doing some testing for them, but they were providing um, all the code that allows the strike board to run. It was a lot of work? It was a lot of work be behind the scenes. The actual work turned out to be relatively simple because Qualcomm has written the kernel driver and the FFmpeg glue, someone just needed to pick it up and, and push it upstream. So uh, Jorge has done that, he's uh, at Bay Libra and he's now maintaining that stuff. So the, the, the patch he mentioned, it's on the mailing list, it's under review. So hopefully it will be in FFmpeg soon and then you will need 
no patches to have this working. And this is so cool because uh, a lot of people are looking forward to this. Or what? Well, it, it, it allows Kodi and Libre ALAC to su support one system because right now they have the special Raspberry Pi version for multimedia, they have a special AM Logic version for multimedia, they have the special IMX6, uh, so all different code paths. And in theory, you, you can now replace that with a single code path. One release. Yeah, well, like, binary, it, it's one, uh, not even, not really that, but it, it allows us to streamline the process through Kodi. So it, it now, instead of a bunch of people working on very specific code in the project, now we can have all those people working together on the same code that works on all the projects. So what do you think about Kodi? What do I think about Kodi? You have the t-shirt, right? I love Kodi. Why? I've been working with Kodi for a lot of years now, and... It's a very fun project to work on. Um, open source project, GPL licensed. Millions of users. Millions of users, correct. And uh, all these people watching all this video stuff, it's making the world a better place, right? Yeah, totally. we hope. Yeah. <laughs> cool.